Their love story began in Iran. Nagme, an American citizen since early childhood, believed God was leading her to return to her homeland in 2001 to minister to Muslim women. That's where she first saw Saeed Abedini. The young preacher was leading worship at one of the underground house churches he helped form. What made you fall in love with him? His passion. I think as a young woman, I always prayed. I said, Lord, I can't marry someone who's mediocre. <laughs> I, ha I want to marry someone who is passionate for you. But I, I mean, I had no idea how, how he would answer my prayer. <laughs> I, didn't, I had no idea he, it would be so radical. Not long afterwards, the two married in Iran. Their wedding drew hundreds of well-wishers and aroused the suspicion of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Well, our wedding, our union was a miracle because we were both Muslim converts and they allowed us to have a Christian union. Bibles were passed out, um, Jesus film videos were passed out, and many people came to know Christ, hundreds. Well, it takes a special bride to be able to w be willing to share her big well, day. Jesus shine, which made me happy. Yes, I mean, you imagine that day, it's going to be all about you, and it wasn't. It was just a big, uh, big, I mean, it was amazing. It was what we both would have wanted for a wedding. But nine years and two children later, four-year-old Jacob and six-year-old Rebecca Nagme is now living her worst nightmare. Last July, during one of Saeed's routine trips to Iran to establish a government-approved orphanage, he was detained and put under house arrest. Then, in January, the Iranian Revolutionary Court, so-called hanging judge, sentenced him to eight years in Iran's brutal and deadly Evan prison. His crime? Preaching the gospel. In these photos, you can see men hanging outside the prison an attempt to bring even more terror to inmates and family members. Just the name um, really scared me. I've had, um, during the revolution, people who we knew and also family members um, who were um, hanged in that prison and killed and abused and raped. Before he was sentenced, Saeed could Skype with his family. Now they have no personal contact, only reports and letters from family members in Iran. The latest telling them that Saeed is being tortured and pressured to renounce his Christian faith. I said to myself, they don't know who they're dealing with. <laughs> he, uh, Saeed came from a very radical Muslim background and he's very, um, since he accepted Christ and his life changed, um, he was very um, committed. It doesn't matter what beatings he goes through. It doesn't matter if they say we're going to kill you. As, as a wife, what's been the hardest part of all of this for you? The Lord has given me grace to go to His presence and just get my comfort. And, and uh, But as a mom, every, it's just every time is this, it's like a stab <laughs> in my heart when I see them struggling and I can't do anything about it. My son is very, I, his character has changed 100%. Since um, the arrest, he won't talk as much. He's very reserved. And then my daughter, she just cries a lot. What does this say? This I miss you, Dad. And these are your tears? Yeah. Nagme admits at first she sank into despair. I was in the edge of extreme depression and anxiety and worry. And I could see that where I was almost being broken, like just I would have... <laughs> had to check myself in, but the Lord didn't let me break. I clung to him and I cried out to him. I said, Lord, in Philippians, you promise you will give peace beyond understanding. And he gave me, he gave me that peace. And so the scripture is true. I just want people to know that um, if they cling to him and believe in his scripture and just don't let him go, like, hold on tight. He's going to get you through whatever it is. In the meantime, the American Center for Law and Justice is going full throttle with both a legal and media campaign. Jordan Seculo says publicity could be a lifesaver for Saeed, just as it was for Iranian pastor Yusuf Nardakani, sentenced to death for his Christian faith. But late last year, thanks to a major publicity and prayer campaign, Nardakani was freed. What's the chance that Pastor Abedini will walk out of Evan prison? The only chance would be is people speaking out. Chance-wise, surviving one day is not a great chance, honestly. You can be beaten to death by the guards. You can be beaten to death by a, a fellow inmate. If the story is talked about, people don't get beaten yeah. as badly.
The good news, people are talking. Nearly a half a million people have signed the Save Saeed petition on the ACLJ's website. In September of 2012, American and Christian musicians are also speaking out on his behalf. Help us share his story. Sign the petition at SaveSaeed.org. So help me God. Secretary of State John Kerry promised to work for Saeed's freedom, but has made no public comment on the matter since he was sworn in. Nagme says she believes prayer, not government, will free her husband. Do you believe you'll see him again? I do, you know, um, it's the flesh versus the spirit. My flesh wants to say he's not gonna survive that prison. But when I pray, I feel like the Lord, he's a God of hope and he um, tells me that it's at his time he will release Saeed.